it was a story that made international news. Remnants of a controversial scientific experiment dating back to the 1950s had been uncovered in a Melbourne laboratory. Australia's Radiation Safety Authority has confirmed that the bodies of thousands of Australian children and adults were used in scientific nuclear tests without consent. The experiments lasted more than 20 years and involved reducing the bones of dead children to ash. In the largest survey of its type carried out anywhere, the bones of the dead had been analysed for one of the most poisonous substances on Earth, strontium-90. A byproduct of nuclear weapons testing, which can find its way into human bone through the milk of cows. The discovery of the bone samples raises more questions than it answers. Did radioactivity contaminate the milk supply? If so, who knew it was happening? And what effect did it have on the population? Some of the answers lie in the story of maverick Australian scientist, Hedley Marston. In the mid-1950s, Marston risked his career when he discovered that the most powerful forces in the British Commonwealth were lying to the Australian public. For Hedley Marston, the trouble began in late 1955. It was the height of the Cold War. Unknown to Marston, Australia's Federal Security Agency, ASIO, had begun investigating his background. Why, it asked, had a communist newspaper published flattering articles about him. Was he a communist sympathizer? Those interviewed ridiculed the suggestion. Hedley Marston was a British patriot and the most celebrated biochemist in the country. I met Hedley as a child. He had this enormous charm, um, but as a child I always thought it was a bit sus. And the more I've learnt since, the more I've learnt that the charm was only a weapon to achieve his ends. For more than 20 years, Marston had run the Division of Animal Nutrition for Australia's foremost scientific organisation, the CSIRO. Throughout his career, he was fated by industrialists, artists and the cream of society. His fame came as a result of a major scientific breakthrough. On a large tract of coastal land in South Australia, sheep and cattle were wasting away and dying on what appeared to be good pasture. The discovery of a lack of cobalt and copper in the soil saved hundreds of farmers from ruin and helped turn similar regions around the world into fertile grazing land. Marston's staff had made the discovery, but he bathed in the glory. He was honoured as a Fellow of the Royal Society of London and championed as a hero by Australian farmers. He ruled with an iron hand. He ruled by fear. Um, he certainly saw nothing wrong in the least with appropriating all his junior officers' results because he was the head of the division and they were just junior officers. And um, he regarded himself as being like the conductor of an orchestra. In October 1955, ASIO gave Hedley Marsden a security clearance. For an upcoming series of atomic weapons tests in Australia, the British wanted his help to set up top secret radiation experiments with animals. His work on the project would spark the bitterest dispute in Australian science. From October 1955, 
Hadley Marston became an essential component of the British atomic tests. Little did they know the kind of man, the ego of this man. A letter to Fred White, Chief Executive Officer of CSIRO, personal and confidential. Dear Fred, it isn't necessary to thank me for my readiness to cooperate with the British in their atomic project. I'm uncooperative only with humbug. My own negative feelings about CSIRO becoming involved in military secrets has always been clear. Had the experiment been other than one concerned with the protection of civil populations, I would not so willingly agree to lend a hand. I understand the sensitivities involved. Yours, Hedley Marston. Britain had already exploded three atomic devices in Australia. But no effort had been made to measure the impact of radioactive fallout on the continent. With a new round of tests due in 1956, the British asked Marston to supply animals and scientists to study the biological effects of fallout within a few hundred kilometres of the test site. With CSIRO's expertise with ruminants, the decision was made to use sheep and goats. Well, the animals were to be fed pasture, which was laid out in the anticipated uh, line of fallout. And the pasture was collected and fed to the sheep. And then uh, the animals were autopsied and each organ was assessed for the presence of the various fallout products. The aim of the experiments was based on the fact that three or so major atomic bombs would obliterate Britain. There are those that were killed, but there would be all those survivors. What were you going to feed them? And the first question there was whether the fallout would be so dangerous that uh, the requirement would be to kill, shoot all the grazing animals because the uh, fission products that came out of the bomb would find their way into animals and they would find their way even into food. Marston received sensitive measuring equipment from the British but he soon realised their experiments were poorly conceived and would certainly fail. If he was running them, as he privately desired, they would be far different. <laughs> 